Good everybody, it's me, Tim Keys, and I'm here to talk about Rompler. Rompler is a tool that will allow you to create your own VSTs without the need for coding. I'll say that again. Rompler is a tool that will allow you to create your own VSTs without the need for coding. Yes. <clears throat> There are a lot of features in this plugin. You have a mapping editor, which has a built-in time stretch algorithm. It gives you some effects, your standard reverb, delay, phaser, uh, chorus. You can modify the LFO. You have filter, your standard attack, state gain, blah, blah, blah. Basically, this is going to allow you the ability to make your own VSTs, and you can get really creative with this. <clears throat> now it comes at various price points. I'll try to show this without it mucking up. You can see that real quick, get a screenshot of it. Basically you got four versions, a trial version, which is the most limited. It'll basically allow you to get your feet wet, test the program, see if you like it, mess around with the GUI and, you know, play with the samples that you have, upload them and, you know, modify parameters. Again, you're only going to get a feel for the instrument to really see what the instrument can do to have access to the features you're gonna have to buy it you can get a perpetual license for about 200 bucks you can do a monthly subscription for about 30 bucks a month which i think is probably the best bet because you can touch and go as needed or you can do a yearly subscription for about 300 bucks a month which gives you access to everything such as you know consultation um packs released every month and so forth and updates so you know look into that see which one fits you mess around with the trial version and see if you like it and go from there you also have a gui designer that you can use to you know essentially build your own custom background using this stuff you can upload your own stuff use graphics text and so forth to really kind of get the create the feel for your own personalized vst cool thing about this stuff is once you're done creating everything you could bounce it off and export it literally as a vst which is pretty cool now let's go into the product itself you see it for what it is you have three windows to work with in the trial version which is what i'm playing with right now you have the mapping editor gui editor and then audio and midi settings in my case and i'll say this for anybody use it make sure you have your MIDI controller loaded up. Make sure you have everything commuting, communicating with your devices. Once you do that, everything is pretty much straightforward. You just drag and drop the samples that you like. I have my own samples that I've created from making my own sample library. Once you drag that in, you everything will be placed in a numeric value. They will not place it you know as like c3 c4 and so forth so that's something to consider i do not know if pitch detection is added within the paid versions but at any rate you just hit import and then you just stretch it out you can stretch this out across the entire keyboard or if you wanted to you could upload multi samples and then have different parts stretched out as you desire once you do that you can go in, click on your sample, and go down to loop mode and hit forward. Now, these samples that I have here already, these are these have already had loop points set in, and I think it detects it for the most part. It might not, but I think it does. Or it's long enough that I'm not going to care. Yep. Oh, I think it dropped out. So set the loop mode to forward, no looping. And then you can modify things like the root note numerically, the key range, velocity range. You could change the sample start where the sample ends, the loop start where it loop ends, the gain, panning, fading in, fading out, the K amount, the sustain amount, and the fade so all of that can be modified up here you can do things like change the playback from monophonic to polyphonic you can import a portamental glide and have the glide time 
You have your standard attack, decay, sustain, release, different filter types you can use, pardon me, different LFO types you can use, your drive, you have two types of filters, you can adjust the cutoff, and then you have your various effects. Pretty basic for what they give you, chorus, phaser, delay, reverb, that you can adjust. <clears throat> and then, you know, you can build your samples or your sound, in this case, if you wanted to, because you're using samples, you probably want to layer certain things and to, you know, make your stuff sound a little bit fat. You can drive it as you need it. I have the low pass filter already on. Let's turn it off. So there's that. Going into the GUI editor that comes with the program, it's fairly straightforward. You can you know, mess around with stuff, change this up as needed. You can kind of rearrange the layout as you see fit. You can make it wider, you can make it taller, you can insert your own background picture, change the color, and so forth. Yep, see, so <laughs> select the color. If I wanna change the color, to a darker tone. Now I got that selected, take that off, and now I have my own, you know, or a different color, so to speak. I'm gonna put that back on. And then, yeah, you can adjust that as needed. So this would be the knob to adjust the chorus, but if I wanted to change that, I totally could and make it the knob for the phaser. Drop this down as you saw fit. So it's a lot that you can do here. It's enough to watch your appetite. And in the Discord group that has been demonstrating this product, there are a lot of creative folks that can demonstrate like the custom GUIs. So it's a lot that you can do from that standpoint. You can get really creative if you know what you're doing. Now, as I said earlier, this will allow you the ability to build your own sample based VSTs. In terms of waveform generating tools, they, they don't have anything built in. You're going to have to feed it stuff. However, there's a workaround that you can use, and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing I want to do, I want to get rid of what I already got. So I'm going to right click on my waveform. I'm going to remove that sample. I'm going to go back in my folder. I have my own customized wavetables. These are single cycle. <clears throat> I also have my own regular wavetables. Single cycle means, if I could break it down, your wavetable is essentially a waveform that consists of multiple waveforms that transition or crossfade from one waveform to another. So in Serum, you, know, you might have a, a waveform that starts off as a sine and then, you know, transitions to a sawtooth or, you know, you might have a waveform that has various components to that sound. You can see the a visual representation. Um, a single cycle waveform is simply like the sine wave, that one one cycle, if you will, without the transitioning. And depending on who you are, you can build your own waveforms if you have the tools, and that will enable you to basically add those type of sawtooth triangle additive waveforms in. When you do it in, it's the same procedure as normal. You import, drag it in. Again, it's going to show you the same stuff. When you put in these type of waveforms, you're going to hear a popping noise. So even as you stretch this out, you're going to hear a popping noise. So you have to go and make sure you go down and... We're going to hit that loop, make sure we forward it, and it's going to sound super abrasive. I'm going to drop my tone to about 29 because I've done this before. <laughs> I dropped it to about 29. There we go. Um, now, every waveform, when you're doing this type of stuff, works a little bit different because when you, when you create a waveform and you export it and you bounce it, it's going to be exported at a very, very low frequency, which is why I had to adjust it to play 
at a standard note. Sometimes you also have to be careful that as you go up the, the notes on uh, your controller or your synth, that um, it will play across the entire keys. Some, some waveforms won't do that. In this case, mine does. This particular waveform, it'll go all the way up and down. So that's important. Some waveforms don't do that. Sometimes it's the sampler. Sometimes it's just a matter of the time stretch algorithm. But in this case, sorry, that's very loud. But as you can hear, this is going all the way up and down the keyboard. And then it won't go lower than that unless I drag it. Let's drag it a little bit more. One more, sorry. So there's that. And if I want to, you know, add some sounds to this, at that chorus, at that reverb, and then go in, turn on the filter. if it's too loud put it right there and if I want to go up here attack the case sustain and release I'm going to release which is really nice. And so, yeah, you got your own basic sound. So <clears throat> that's one way as a workaround if you want to go in depth and to get like your own sine wave, single shot waveforms, that's what I call them, single cycle waveforms into this product. And, and then you can really replicate that feel for having basic waveforms and having other sounds. So, <clears throat> That's pretty much it straightforward, all the basics. Once you get done, you can pretty much take this. If you have the full version, you can save it, load it up. You can export it as a plugin and you know, export it to Ableton for VST3 support. Um, I think you can do Pro Tools and Logic. So they pretty much got their basics covered. On the flip side, it only exports to VST3 format, not VST2, because that is being phased out within the next few years. Um, so yeah, the pros and the cons I'll do real quick. The pros is, is simple. Uh, this is probably the lowest barrier of entry to creating your own plugin. If you're someone who wants to know how to make your own plugin or want to get your own stuff out, this is a good way to do it. If you're someone who makes sample packs, loop packs, you can now go a step further and have your own VST drums, your own VST synth, especially if you're somebody who has a lot of synthesizers and so forth. And, you know, you pay, pay the $30 a month for as much as you need it, build your stuff, and I would presume when you're done, you... <laughs> you call it good and then when you're ready to pick it back up pay another 30 bucks when you have some more samples um, again cost of entry is pretty low and then yeah there's no coding required so that's uh, kind of a big deal on the flip side as I'm only messing around with the, the trial version I can't speak to what's in the full version but <clears throat> Um, there's no like sample waveform editor that you can visualize to modify your stuff and see it as you're making changes to the waveform. You, the filter types are limited. And so it would be nice to see more filter types 
to really go in and be able to shape your sound and for that user to be able to do likewise there i don't see a filter a filter envelope which is fairly common with vsts and you know your effects are basic but you don't necessarily have an option for different types of reverbs or delays so stuff like that would be cool but i imagine as this product continues to be on the market and as things move forward i'm excited to see how it is developed yes there are other options out there that you can use and there are other tools that if you want to get into creating your own vst that's out there. However, most of them will either require some form of knowledge of coding or they'll be a little bit more difficult to use or you'll have to be invested into that platform. So like a contact, a uh, Max for Live, a reactor, most of those tools are, you know, they might be more powerful for what they offer, but they lock you into that platform and anything that you create is specifically used for other people who have also bought into that platform. This is one of the few tools I've seen outside of, you know, maybe heists that you don't need. <laughs> like you could just build your stuff, make it a VST3, ship it out, and there's no platform. Like it's you create it, you send it out you're good to go. So I think this is a awesome product available. I think if you're someone that's curious about this type of, you know, creative platform, you should definitely check this out. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm Tim Keys. I'm out. Peace.